streaming, said Steve when he clicked the button. Looks like it's working. Stream is offline. No, no, it's not. There it is. Oh, yeah. That's my face. Hello, face. Hello, friends. This is Jerry Howard. The Toronto Blue Jays won the New York Yankees 13. Can they make a comeback? We will see. Hey, everybody. Oh, there's the chat. No one was in it a minute ago. Trying to light my face up with the lamp a little bit. Hey, everybody. How you doing? I see you. Leafs are the best. I agree. Steve, big fan. No, you're not. You're lying. How about the Sprung trade? Yeah, there was another trade uh, just before I started this stream, looks like. So we got two trades. Looks like we got two trades to talk about, and I sort of had a feeling. I, well, not that this particular pair of trades would happen, but I said on the podcast a while ago, everything just sort of felt too quiet. Oh, gee, super chat already. Hey, Mark Anthony, thank you. Uh, everything just felt a little uh, too quiet. There was a lot of waiver wire action. Too many teams are displeased. I feel like um, more teams are out of it or perceived as out of it or perceived struggling than they have been, uh, or at least they were last year. Something just seemed ready to crack. Dubis with Nylander finally out of the way has some answers right he didn't want to make any moves he didn't okay Tavares is enormous say that right away but he didn't put his stamp on the team in the way that so many gms do they make a bunch of moves right andrew nielsen that's not really a big move tyler ennis it's not really a big move Tavares was huge but He's been with the team for so long, and I think Justin Bourne brought up this point. He was probably looking, volume's low. He was probably looking, is it because I usually yell? He was probably looking at, um, I'll read that in a minute. He was probably looking at guys on his and going, okay, here's what I would have done. We didn't really see him do any of that. And now that he's got an answer with Nylander, I feel like he might start doing some things. Anaheim and Pittsburgh is interesting because I think it's two teams, two bird logo teams that clearly need to do something. Uh, Daniel Sprung, I know, has been struggling mightily, the former second-round pick for the Pittsburgh Penguins, and he was a big disappointment. Um, I know there were high hopes for him. Let's look at Marcus Pedersen. I haven't really seen anything on him. Do, do, do. There he is. Nope. Martin Pedersen. I don't know who you are. Marcus Pedersen, another former second round pick of the Ducks, 2014. He's been on the Ducks this season, 27 games played, six assists. Eh. Defense, granted. Pittsburgh gets a defender for a forward. Might be a decent match for them. I'm not sure. I saw a really morbid tweet about all this. I saw a really morbid tweet. Where is it? Penns Nation underscore Nick. The Penguins gave Daniel Sprong false hope by skating him with Crosby and Gensel this morning before they shipped him out to greener pastures. It's essentially what you do to an old dog before you put it down. Eat whatever you want, Daniel. You're a good boy. Jeez, Nick! What the hell? I didn't need that in my life this afternoon. A little too old to be that Edgar Allan Poe, don't you think? That dark, that that goth. Ugh. Didn't like that at all. It does sound me. I know. Holy crap, the chat's going nuts. It's ridiculous. Although, yeah, it's okay, Daniel. It's okay. Yeah. Here, play with Crosby. It's gonna be fine. Ducks! Have fun with Randy! It's awful. Uh I had a super chat. It's Dan J. Hey, Steve. I sent you my Leafs room on IG, right? I gotta look for that. Lucas Burn... Lucas. Podcast day? No, it is not. Uh, but I believe tomorrow is. How about... How about I don't waste everyone's time? Dan, I will get back to you, I promise. Hi, Comron. Thank you. 
It's nice that you love me. You're like my mom. That's the second time I've been told that. Third time I've been told that today. My wife said it. I saw my mom and she said it. And now you said it. That's so nice. Yes. So let's get to it. Uh, where did the question go? From Cody Smith. Thoughts on, thoughts on Michael uh, Carsoni? Carcone? I'm not totally sure. Uh, thank you very much, Midge. Midge? Midge. Um, so the trade, if you don't know... Josh Levo was traded to the Vancouver Canucks single tier. Actually, lots of tiers because I miss him already. Uh, for a young 22-year-old forward named... Uh, he's young and 22. Did you know that? He's a 22-year-old forward named Michael uh, Carsone. Carcone. I'm not really sure. Uh, I saw Bob McKenzie tweet that he doesn't... Uh, or at least Carsone is not really viewed as an NHL prospect necessarily. Here's why the trade makes sense, and then I'll get more into the players. Carsone, admittedly, I don't know too much about. Levo, <laughs> if you've ever listened to the podcast, it could have. There were a lot of episodes where it could have just been called the Josh Levo podcast. Um, so, uh, the trade was Levo for Carsone, and Levo, as you know from last year, couldn't be sent down on waivers. That's why he was basically held prisoner. And I think the year before, too. So he's been a Leaf for like three years now. This is his third straight season as a Leaf. Not a prospect, a Leaf. But they haven't used him. So he's been in this weird prospect purgatory. Um, Carson, people are saying. Thank you, Carson. That's what I will call him. Like a calzone. Cartoon-pectone. <laughs> That hit me. That hit me so hard. <laughs> that was a good one. Congrats. That was very good. Um, so yeah, Lebo, Levo was basically a prisoner. This year, he was actually playing on the team. Playing on the second power play, in fact. And that was a weird thing about him getting in the lineup. Is often when he did, um, he would be on the power play. Carcone? Am I the worst Italian of all time? Only half. See, I wish this trade happened before I saw my mom. She would have told me. Hi, hockey boy. Leafs net, yes. Um, so Levo was finally playing this year. Played in all 27 games. Four goals, two assists. He had a beauty uh, just last week when he played with Marner for a very brief amount of time. And, uh, I don't know, I'm sad to see him go. I am. Uh, because, one, he represented hope. At a time where there was none, as a Leafs fan, basically, I remember when I wrote, uh, when I yeah, when I wrote for the LeafsNation.com. Now it's MapleLeafsNation.com or something. That uh, Levo, I had him ranked as the Leafs' second best prospect behind Morgan Riley. And I think that was in 2012 that I wrote that. 2012 or 13, I had him as this. Well, it would have it must have been 2013 because Riley was picked in 2012. Adam is the Leafs' second best prospect and best forward prospect. <laughs> Times have changed rapidly. Um, he represented Hope. I think he was a Brian Burke pick. I want to say it was Brian Burke's last draft, or it might have been Dave Nonis's first. Um, represented Hope. I saw him in the minors. Wicked, wicked shot. So good. Uh, I saw him... There was this practice at the Marlies. I went to a Marlies practice once. And there were these nets. And they were on the opposite end of the rink. And they were not pressed against the boards. But they were facing the boards. Almost like pressed against them. With like a sliver of space. And he's on the other end of the ice. And just bank in. Bank in. Bank in. Money. 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 Not missing them. The guy has crazy accuracy. Uh, who knows... Might still be on the team uh, if he had buried a few more. Um, he had a few roll on him so far this season. Here's the problem. He was clearly occupying Nylander's spot. Now, he did so well because he was always pegged as this guy who, yeah, relax about the pepper. I'm going to do the pepper. Just not today. All right? All right? I'm going to do the pepper. The pepper. I don't know why I said it like that. The pepper. Yes, it was Brian Burke's last draft. You're right, because he drafted Riley. Thank you. Um, 
Ah, he was pegged as this guy who could maybe score 15 or 20 goals on a bad team. Like, I think Justin Bourne always was like, oh my God, he's going to go to Arizona or something like that, right? But what ended up happening this year, out of necessity with Nylander out of the lineup, Levo was playing second power play consistently. Uh, he was good at moving the puck around. He could alternate and be a net front presence, although he did that a little bit more at 5-on-5. Five five. And that was the thing. The Leafs' fourth line on a team that was not nearly deep as it should have been. Like, the Leafs' fourth line wasn't supposed to be the uh, main attraction, but it was supposed to be part of what made the Leafs special. It was supposed to be so super deep. Supposed to have Lindholm, and I think the projected fourth line heading into the season was Lindholm, Janssen on the left, and Kapanen on the right, <laughs> which would have been gross. Um, things have obviously changed because of Nylander and because Matthews was out. But what happened with Levo is not only was he good on the second power play unit, he was a good fourth liner. He really embraced it. I was at a game... Uh, it was the game against Boston in Toronto during the regular season. I think Matthews and Bergeron were out of the lineup, which has happened a couple times now. And Marlowe got the overtime winner. And I believe the Leafs were up 2-1 to one or 3-2. to two, And Levo just completely wore the goat horns and gave the puck away or missed an assignment. And the Bruins scored the game-tying goal that forced overtime. Luckily, that game had a happy ending. For Leafs fans and the Leafs. Uh, but he was clearly a guy that Babcock didn't trust. Then this season comes around. And you go, okay, he's in the lineup. Uh, you know, because of, because of Willie or whatever. Just completely out of necessity. But Babcock had this rotation. Gote was in sometimes, not sometimes. Annis was out sometimes, not sometimes. Janssen was out sometimes, not sometimes. Levo always stayed. And that, to me, was surprising. He turned into a Mike Babcock player. He was a big, belligerent fourth liner. No one on the opposite team liked this guy. Everyone seemed to hate him. There was that one game against the Jets this season where him and Line couldn't stop going at each other. And Line, I think he even dragged him to the box because of it. So he was, he was belligerent. He was big. He was mean. He was a jerk, I think. I want to say he's the only Leaf with a fight this season might have one more and that's crazy because he only has seven penalty minutes on the season which i guess gives him one major and one minor i'm telling you almost everyone in the leafs could be nominated for lady bing it's crazy hyman and kadri are tied for the team lead in penalty minutes with 16 eight minors that's it that's it nothing so levo evolved into the kind of player babcock wanted him to be and he was a key part of the team. And he did what he had to do to stay in the lineup. Now, I wish this change happened like two years ago or so. Because he signed that really strange uh, contract. Where he signed for 925. And it was a year ahead of time. And the Leafs weren't using him anyway. So it was a really, really, really strange thing. Uh, didn't seem to make much sense. He finally gets in the lineup. Um... Man, doing this without jump cuts is so much harder. 1,900 people, that's crazy, I'm scared. Um, finally getting the lineup consistently. And supposedly, I read this on Bob McKenzie's Twitter, the agreement when he signed it was, listen, if I fall out of the lineup, uh, you know, you can't find me regular ice, just trade me. And it was sort of also necessitated by the roster. Now, some of you... I saw we're saying, okay, well, Carcone, Carcone, ah, Michael Carcone. We're getting all mad because, well, okay, I, if this guy's not going to play in the NHL, even though he's having a good season in the AHL this year, if this guy's not going to play in the NHL, I would have rather just lost someone to waivers. I would have rather lost Justin Hall, who the Leafs aren't even using right now. I would have rather lost Freddie Gauthier, who the Leafs aren't even using right now. The Leafs have crazy center depth. But the problem, and I've gotten in trouble for saying this on the podcast before, they have great center depth. What they don't have is great center depth, if that makes sense. Their current roster, their healthy roster as it is, is gross. Matthews, Tavares, Kadri, Lindholm. Marlowe can do it. Now that Nylander's back, he can do it. Although after the long layoff, I bet they're at least a month or two away from that. And Gauthier. 
Gote turned himself in, into a legitimate option, which I was not expecting. You had to lose someone. They sent Travis Dermott down on a paper transaction. So Dubas actually did really well to trade someone and get someone who they were able to send down or call up. So Carcon, I guess, is in the AHL right now. Uh, but according to Cap Friendly, at least, uh, as, I, as I saw, he's 22 years old and waiver exempt. So, in essence, instead of losing a third person this season to waivers for free, which is poor asset management, right? You lose McElhaney, you lose Pickard, and then you lose Levo, all three for nothing? I don't think so. Getting Carcone, getting anything, uh, getting a waiver exempt guy is pretty good. The difference here, frig off, Jim, you're drunk. The difference here is now that the Leafs are finally good, finally good, I'm sad that he's gone. One, because he stuck it through while they were bad and was a good soldier, such a good soldier, especially during the Lamorello re regime. You clearly wanted to be a Leaf. But now that the Leafs are good, man, I used to just die. Like, I, I couldn't wait for guys to get traded off this team. All I wanted was draft picks. All I wanted was prospects because the guys on the actual team stunk. They sucked. Hey, we just broke 2,000. That's crazy. All the guys on the current team a few years ago sucked, and I wanted them gone. Levo was one of the guys who I wanted to see uh, called up, and, he, and then he scored like five goals in 12 games. He had a good little streak going. Um, now that they're good, I want them to be cup contenders. I want them to add. I'd like to see a, you know, a change to the back end or two. You know, I saw someone tweeting today, you know, how, how could the Leafs possibly get Wayne Simmons as a rental? And I had the silliest thought, which is, where would he fit? It's Wayne Simmons. You find a spot. You imagine adding Wayne Simmons to this group? Anyway, I'm getting besides the point. All right? I'm losing it. Now that the Leafs are finally good, I love this team. And I love every player. Ron Hainsey. Okay, well, I love almost every player. And listen, Ron Hainsey plays his role too. Losing anyone from this roster, from this team that I love so much, makes me sad, man. It makes me sad that Josh levo has gone. I wish him the best. Man, what a great opportunity in Vancouver. I don't know if they're going to make the playoffs, but he's going to get to play with some really talented players. Really talented players. I got to imagine he's going to play on their power play. Uh, maybe plays a little higher in the lineup than the fourth line some nights. Maybe a little bit of second action. Maybe a little bit of third. Um, at very least stays in the lineup the whole time and makes an NHL salary. And when his contract expires, hopefully he builds a body of work over the season where he can sign for some real money. Sign for over a million bucks. Maybe a couple maybe a couple million bucks. A couple, a couple of you were asking me for a Mike Babcock impression. And listen, here's the thing. Josh Levo, he, uh, you know, everyone's talking about the kind of player he is. The important thing is uh, that Josh has turned into a good man. And when you're a good man, you're going to be a good player. You're going to find yourself a good lady, and she teaches you how to be a good man. And if she teaches you how to be a good man, you'll be a good player. How's that? I'm sad to see him go. Michael Carcone. Oh. Oh. Italiano. Let's look up some stuff on him. So here's how I got myself into trouble consistently. Uh, it was around 2 o'clock, a little after 2 o'clock. I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a live stream for this trade. And I'm going to tweet about it. And it's going to be super fun. And then I had to take the dogs on a walk. And then I wasn't even home yet. And I'm looking down at my phone. And I'm like, you're not going to have time to do any research. So that's fun. I got myself in trouble. Okay, here is the press release from the Toronto Maple Leafs website. How's that? How's that? The Toronto Maple Leafs announced today that the hockey club has acquired forward Michael Carcone from the Vancouver Canucks in exchange for forward Josh Levo. In a corresponding move, defenseman Travis Dermott has been recalled from the Toronto Marlies. Carcone, 22, has appeared in 20 games with the Utica Comets 
in the AHL during the 18-19 season, just say this season, uh, recording six goals and 11 assists for 17 points, which is a far better rate uh, than his previous, I think, two AHL seasons. Prior to joining the Canucks organization, the Ajax Ontario native played two seasons for the Drummondville Voltageur of the QMJHL and recorded 130 points, 59 goals and 71 assists, in 116 games. Carcone was originally signed as a free agent by the Canucks on July 15th, 2016. Y'all are hilarious. I saw some people online going, man, why would they get a guy who couldn't even score in the queue? He puts up 130 points in 116 games. I know it's the queue. And everyone scores in the queue. I believe he's an Ontario boy playing in the Quebec League, which is rare but not unheard of. The Leafs had a guy, Christy Domenico. Christy Domenico, I believe, was an Ontario-born player who played in the queue. Former sixth-round pick. Could have been great. It's good to see that he's been puttering around the NHL, playing every now and then. Justin Hall for Duncan Keith. Wow, I believe it. That's amazing. I'm so happy about that trade that you mentioned. Josh B. Sebo, he could be called. I saw someone said, Josh, uh, by the Sebo. You know what they have in Vancouver? Really good Josh Sushibo. Sushibo. Kept saying Bo. Used to call, call global TV global. Because I was a stupid child. That's why. Michael... Carcone. Oh, I did uh, get something from a source. Um, Michael Carcone, uh, Ontario boy, Ajax native, as we just said. Uh, in the summers, he works out in <laughs> what the? He works out in Whitby, Ontario. This I just searched Michael Carcone's name on Twitter. Justin Fisher tweets: Michael Carcone owns a vegan restaurant in Peterborough. This isn't a joke. That's worth a click. I don't know. I don't even know. I never know when he's taking the piss. Jeez. Uh, from Scott Wheeler three hours ago. Michael Carcone is a decent AHL forward with doubtful NHL upside. This is the Leafs trying to get something out of a waiver move that would have generated nothing. Not a great outcome for Leafs or Levo. I disagree with that. But writing has been on the wall. And they had to lose someone for Nylander. So, you know, it's funny. Everyone, uh, a lot of a lot of fans of other teams have been going, oh, the Leafs are going to lose a bunch of guys. They're going to lose some important pieces. But Nylander coming back, well, uh, Levo. Levo. Everyone's been saying Kapanen and Matthews and Marner. Josh Levo. I like Josh Levo too, but come on. Um... I disagree with Scott that uh, it's not a great outcome for Levo. I, I bet he's bummed about it because I know he's wanted to be a Leaf. And if all things were perfect, he would have stayed on in, in the lineup and continued to play on the second power play. But he's going to get a chance to go to another team and score a bunch of points and make a bunch of money. Uh, like, was okay, so he's got six points in 27 games so far. If he plays all 82 games this season, he's going to get 18 points. Well, what kind of a deal does he? Do you think he's gonna get? How many goals? Twelve. Twelve? Twelve. Not bad for a fourth liner. And wow, you know that really shows why, to me, why this isn't a bad thing for Levo at all. Man, if he goes to the Canucks, they play him up in the lineup a little bit. They give him more ice time. The Leafs, I, I want to say on average, it was less than ten minutes a game he was getting. Typically, it was like nine forty-five somewhere around there man if he plays third third line minutes he doesn't even have to be the most solid defensively a lot of teams are starved for goals and if he scores a bunch of goals if he was on pace for 12 as a fourth liner slash second power play guy i think he only had one or two power play goals if he stays uh if he scores at a higher pace maybe turns himself into a 20 goal scorer 20 goal scorers make three million bucks for getting out of bed Sean Tierney with a uh, chart I don't understand. 
<laughs> ah, that's a good one. Dark guy, Michael Carcone, about to become the most Googled name on the internet today. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Bobby Cappuccino have always said that Michael Carcone is the best prospect in hockey. Absolute steal by Duvis. Sure. Okay, Sean Tierney, this is a good one. Frantically Googles Michael Carcone's name. Oh, they traded Levo for Levo. Yeah, Josh Levo, he's managed to turn himself into something, but his body of work is still less than 100 NHL games. Um, so, like, to say this is a huge loss uh, is just not true. It makes me sad. Don't get me wrong. Emotionally, I'm attached to this guy. It makes me sad. But um, to suggest it's a huge loss and, like, he's so much better than Carcone, I don't know about that, man. I don't know what, about that. Sprung traded, yeah. So here, let me look at these stats. Because I said it was Marcus Pedersen with the Ducks. Uh, this season he's got seven points, I think it was, as a defenseman. If you guys have any questions, let me know. It's kind of hard to see them all. I'm obviously not looking at the chat right now, but I will in a momento. Oh, one thing I will add. And I was sort of, I just burped on camera. There's another one. I was sort of thinking to myself, and then I saw some people tweeting about it as well. Um... I wonder if a guy like Justin Hall becomes more important next year when the Leafs are in a really big cap crunch. And maybe they're sort of doing to him what they did to Levo. Is they like this guy, but they just don't want to lose him to waivers. Uh, I don't necessarily think that's the case. It's never really worked out. Levo's best case scenario, uh, Frank Corrado, I suppose, is worst. Um, so I guess that means Hall will be back on an AHL deal. I don't really know what that means. All right. So the Anaheim Ducks, who, uh, every forward they've ever had is hurt. Uh, they acquired Daniel Sprong from the Pittsburgh Penguins, a right winger, shoots right. I should say that, uh, Levo, I believe, plays both sides. And Carsone Carcone is, uh, listed as a right winger as well. Daniel Sprong. From Amsterdam, Netherlands. Ah. He's a uh, yeah right winger, shoots right. Second round pick, 46th overall in 2015. This season in 16 games. And it sounds like the Penguins have given him some opportunity. Ugh, minus 7, which I'm not a huge fan of that stat, but whatever. No goals, 4 assists. Pfft, not good enough, man. And just last season, that's crazy. Just last season with Wilkes-Barre Scranton in 65 games. 32 goals, 33 of 6, 65 points. Man, that doesn't strike me as the kind of guy you give up on right away. He's only 21 years old. Boy, I don't know about that, seeing that. I mean, you got to do it at the NHL level, but I don't know about that. Marcus Pedersen, defenseman, shoots left from Skalleftia, Sweden. I don't know if that's how you say it. 22 years old, 6 foot 3. But 175 pounds, he is extraordinarily skinny and vaguely looks like someone I went to high school with. He was a second-round pick, 38th overall in 2014 and 27 games, zero goals, six assists. So Marcus Pedersen is outscoring Daniel Sprong this season. Let me just point that out right now. Uh, let's play a fun game called Who Was Drafted Near That Guy Who Just Got Traded in a Very Small Trade? Ooh. So Marcus Pedersen who's played 49 NHL games. No one's really played a ton of games after him. There is one player in the second round who is, okay, there's two players, who were picked in the second round after Pedersen, who have played over 100 NHL games. One is Christian Dvorak, 58th overall from Arizona. That hurts. He's got, uh, well, he hasn't had the greatest NHL career so far, but decent. 70 points in 156 NHL games. The other guy picked 55th overall, another defenseman, Brandon Montour of the Anaheim Ducks. So the Ducks did all right in 2014. Who was their first rounder? Let me look at that. Nick Ritchie. 
Oh, yeah, did you really go with Nick Richie? They got him there. He held out for a little while. I didn't like that. But hey, he gets in the lineup. The big guy, he scored a goal. And what, what's he got here? Nick Richie, 200 games played. Hey, he played 200 games. Not everyone gets to play 200 games. Get 30 goals, 30 assists, 68 points. Good Canadian kid. Ducks did all right. Daniel Sprong in 2015. Where are we looking here? There he is. Ooh, that's interesting. Okay, so he's played 42 career NHL games. Uh, the pick before him was Jakob Forsbaka Carlson. Hello, wife. You're on live stream. Oh, I love you. Bye. She's shy. Um, Vince Dunn was picked after him by the St. Louis Blues. That would have been a good pick. That would have completely negated the need for this uh, trade. There's a few guys who have played. Philip Chlapik, Rup Hintz, Jordan Greenway, scored in the Leafs the other night. Eh. Rasmus Anderson, Calgary. A lot of people talk very highly of him. Can't really fault the Penguins for that pick. I Man, I fault them more for the trade. Here's the heartbreaker. So, uh... Sprong was picked 46th. Ugh. 37th. Brandon Carlo, Boston Bruins. 35th overall, Sebastian Ajo. Ugh. Carolina Hurricanes. And the pick before him, Travis Dermott. Ugh. That's hurt. That hurts. That's no good. That's not a good feeling. That's not a good feeling. What's this? Leipzig claimed off waivers. I'm going to have to check this out. Oh, we got a couple uh, 80 points for Marner. 90, 100. Oh, yeah. So I want to correct something that I said the other day. Uh, Luke Woodworth, thank you very much. Um, I said that Marner was on pace for 97 points. No, he's on pace for 97 assists. Ooh. <laughs> he's pretty good, man. He's pretty good. Or I might have just got a complete number wrong, but he's on pace for over 100. He's goofy. Very goofy. Only on pace for 18 goals, though, I believe. What else we got? I'm not going to lie, guys. Those are two relatively insignificant trades, at least in the present. So if you have uh, more to say, ask me some questions. A little bit more on Michael Carcone I'm getting. Uh, so yeah, I told you he tra uh, trains in Whitby in the summers. He played minor midget for the Ajax Raiders. Followed by, you can Google it if you want. No, I trust you. What a strange thing to say. You can Google it if you want. Oh, Iggy's going nuts. Why is Iggy... One sec. Iggy! Come! Why are you barking? Come! Might get some victory puppy action. Hey, Goof. What's up? Come here. Oh, we got double. Double action. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hello. Puppies de victoire. Uh, oh, my. Hey, boys. Oh, are you just cuddling? Are you just cuddling? Are you just cuddling. They're just good boys. Oh, nonsense. Oh, I just see nonsense. Charlie likes a good head scratch. You know what he also likes? Another thing he's very passionate about is um, dog breath. He's really passionate about smelly old man dog breath. Iggy likes an ear rub. There's an ear rub. Yeah, what's this about Brendan Leipzig? I want to see this. Brendan Leipzig. He was just placed on waivers. LA Kings claim 24-year-old. Wow, he's 24? Uh, forward Brendan Leipzig, who has scored 30 points in 81 career games since being selected 89th overall in the 2012 NHL draft. Brendan Leipzig was picked in the same draft as Morgan Riley. So he's in that weird purgatory. Oh, look at this idiot. Charlie. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Go to lick your... There's nothing there anymore. Anyway. 
Um, it's in this purgatory of guys who are young but are not. You know what I mean? Steve, you're supposed to be on a good show soon. Thank you for reminding me. I had my phone turned off. And I bailed on them last time. Thank you. Steve Radio Bod. Are they talking about me on the air right now? <laughs> you imagine if I bailed again? What a dick. Yeah, they're going to call me in like two minutes, guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not a maniac. I'm an idiot. Oh, Iggy, you're such a loving... There, last shot. Guys, I gave you uh, like 40 minutes on uh, a trade of like four AHL. So I hope you like that. Uh, $83 million cap coming. A few people are tweeting me. I'm not sure, or messaging me. I'm not sure if that's true. Iggy, you're a good dog. Uh, that's good news, though. That'd be an increase of $3.5 million. Or... Like, 1.2 Ron Hainsies or something like that. That is a good question about Willie. Hey, Sportsnet. How you doing? That's creepy. Drew? Is it Drew? Um, I don't know if Willie's going to be in the lineup tomorrow. I would imagine not. Uh, but if not, I guess Goat is going to be uh, in his place. So anyway... That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. And like my ramblings. Tell all your friends. My mouth is so dry. God, I love jump cuts. Never leave me again. Miggy, you're a big goof. And, uh, yeah, listen to me on uh, the Fan 590 in like two minutes. <laughs> Sportsnet Radio. Sportsnet 590, the fan. For crying out loud.